So there have been big cat sightings all over the UK. You know, if we go, I mean, literally, like everywhere. And this this is just in England, actually. There there are a bunch in Scotland as well. Hey, can we scroll down? I think there might be a map on here. Uh, uh, no, I thought there was a bigger map. Never mind. But anyway, you see there, there's like literally everywhere. Uh, these are not pictures of them. These are just example pictures. Just in because case, the average sun, didn't know what a the average sun <laughs> reader might not know what a big cat is. Actually. What's a lion? Yeah, well, I can't see it. <laughs> um, but interestingly, Norfolk has the most reported sightings with fifty seven. Uh, Suffolk has twenty six, and a black cat panther has been repeatedly seen stalking the countryside in both counties. In Devon and Cornwall, there have been twenty eight sightings and reports, and five reports of farm animals being killed by big cats. And during the lockdowns, there were lots and lots of reports of big cat sightings. But they didn't show that on the BBC, did they? What else are they hiding? That's actually understandable. You remember when all the what was it, the uh, sheep and deers and stuff started turning up in the villages? Because mm-hmm. the humans weren't going out anymore, mm-hmm. so they just walked in because there was no noise threatening them off. Mm-hmm. So the idea of the big cats would also come in is... And also, if you've got people like, um, all I can do is go for a walk. Well, I'll, go, I'll go for a walk then. And suddenly more people are in the countryside. Well, Sure. But I, I think that it's more likely the fact that the nature just came to where the humans were where they wouldn't before. Probably a combination of both. But anyway, uh, if you go to the next one, uh, an expert has claimed that the rise of big cat sightings across the countryside is because the animals became bolder after lockdown. So he agrees with you. Uh, Mr. Tunbridge says, to a large majority of the British public, the thoughts of big predatory cats, similar in description to a leopard or puma, stalking to our f- woods and fields is unbelievable. Yet to a witness who has observed one of these elusive and stealthy creatures at close quarters, uh, the experience is unforgettable. So are they out there or are they not? The whole subject of big cats living and thriving in the UK has been rolling on for decades without satisfactory conclusion, even though the evidence for their existence is overwhelming. Facts such as confirmed DNA deer killed and consumed in a certain way, and big cat paw marks. There can be no doubt that over the years these animals are out there as a result of releases and escapes from private collections. They have now bred and spread covertly through the British Isles to become naturalised, and are now part of our diverse exotic wildlife. Great news. Labour policy. I don't know, I was not... <laughs> it really is the, the thing that the term diversity only be able to use for terrible ideas. Yeah, it does. What if we bring big cats back to the UK? Isn't it diverse? <clears throat> I don't care. I'd rather the wolves, actually. I'd, I'd, I'd rather not have things that can kill me in the countryside. Yeah, yeah same. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> kind of the whole point of this, yeah. this island. <laughs> like We killed all the dogs just because they might have rabies, yep. and we exterminated rabies from this island. Yep. No one else has done that. No. Let's have a look at the Beast of Staffordshire. Again, this is just everywhere. Uh, this was uh, a chap who took some photos. Uh, there's this uh, this one chap was using his uh, air, 12 pound air rifle uh, looking for rabbits when he spotted a big dark shadow in the background because he's using a, a night vision and it's like well hang on a second what the hell is that uh, he told the son I was on a shooting commission about 10.30pm I was scanning the field one it's a big dark shadow in the background a creature was walking up along the fence uh, at the top of the field 500 yards away the reason it stood out because it stayed so black under the night vision light. I concentrated on it and said, God knows what the hell that is. I got home and downloaded all the footage from my scope. My wife also noticed it and said, what's that? With a close foot. Next day, I sent the footage to the Big Cat Society, which is very interesting, and definitely a large cat by the way it was walking and the size of its tail. Because, of course, cats have got a particularly stealthy walk. And you'll notice that their shoulder blades like roll up and down. Uh, any cat that walks like this, actually. Uh, and so it gives them a very particular and identifiable profile uh, in bristol there was an example of a child who was chased by a big cat which is kind of worrying this is where it's starting to get like hound this is not what we're after was it you know, you're out with on a bike ride with your kids and then suddenly you're attacked by a panther and you have no guns yes i mean I, okay i'm okay with you know wild animals being in the wilderness as long as i can have a gun to shoot them well even then it's a risk I don't sure. know if you saw, there was some recent footage in Italy. There were some people who went out to hunt boars. You think? Yeah. Not that hard, right? Yeah. They're limited to three rounds on their shotguns. Yeah. So this girl, she fires all three rounds. The thing's still alive. Yeah. Like it's, it's almost I have dead. seen that footage, actually. But I, don't, I don't think we should be limiting our guns to three rounds. But it's like, oh, yeah, but what about mass shootings? It's like, yeah, what about the boar? What about high, mag- high capacity magazines, Joe Biden? <laughs> Look at this boar. I have guns. I don't have bullets. I need That's, another 30 rounds. You don't need 30 rounds because you might kill a lot of people. I do need 30 rounds to kill a wild animal. Yeah. Some of them are huge and tough. 
Anyway, uh, this uh, chap says, my son was riding 30 yards in front of me. As we rounded a corner, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a large black animal sprinting from the cover of the woods, heading directly for my son, running diagonally to head him off. My first thought was it was a large black dog, and I wasn't geared up for expecting anything else. The woods are popular with dog walkers, so I quickly looked left to see if I could identify the owners of the dog. I was a bit concerned at the animal's intentions at this stage. When I looked back to see if it was my son, uh, if it was close to my son, the animal had disappeared. Uh, they'd been evening bike ride around the trails at 7.30 p.m. Uh, it looked like a very large cat and not a dog. There were no owners or other people in sight or earshot. The animal also had to traverse a short section of bracken and undergrowth to get to my son. So the only conclusion I could draw is that it saw me coming, aborted its attack, and was laying up in the bracken. Uh, pet dogs simply don't do that. Uh, the cover was not so dense, so it must have been hiding well. Obviously, my son had no idea, so he wasn't scared at the time, but I was quite alarmed. Uh, when I got in, I did a quick search in Google and was really surprised to find out that actually the area is a hotbed for black cat sightings, with one being spotted less than a mile away from our sighting last year. So it might be worth you know, telling your friends and family, actually, they probably are out there. Everyone sees them all the time. It's just for some reason it's not getting like mainstream like news coverage. You have to go to all these local sources. It's like, oh, someone saw a cat. It's like, that's actually pertinent information. But there are really big, dangerous animals out there. Maybe we should know yeah, about that. We'll have to wait for someone to be killed by it before the well, that's ex- press in Westminster care. Well, exactly. That's oh. exactly what it is. So anyway, let's go on some video and photo evidence. Um, they, there are there are large cats that are not big cats that have been spotted. You can play this, actually. So this is some sort of, um, you know, like desert cat, like a caracal or something. I don't know. You know what, but you can see it's it's not house cat. Uh, but it's obviously someone's exotic pet that has either escaped or they've let loose. Uh, and it seems to be completely unperturbed by humans, so I'm guessing a pet. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just, you know, so that's, well, that's you know, a foreign cat of some sort. It's not a house cat. Uh, but uh, anyway, if you go to the next one, there's some good photos in this one from the mirror. If we can scroll down. There, look, I mean that clearly a jaguar i don't know about clearly but clearly not small oh you can tell by the you can tell by the patterning i mean maybe i've just watched yeah, many i can't more. even see any pattern a terrible photo but no look at you can see the spots on it right it's got like wide spots making it a jaguar uh i can't make that out but whatever i'll take your word okay well i think you can and i i'm convinced that's a jaguar um but like like stuff like this there's there's actually just tons of evidence tons of photo evidence tons of video evidence uh one was captured on good morning britain if you can make this full screen or you know a bit bigger so you can see it right (laughs) yeah that's not small they're just just trying to film the swan i mean it might be a dog who knows but the point is like okay there was uh, there was footage from the Peak District that was pretty good as well. Um, this was taken. If you want to play this one, that uh, this is from a chap called Josh Williams, who was just walking by, and he thinks that it was a big cat feeding on a dead sheep in the middle of the field. Um, he says he was convinced the creature was a big cat and looked like a panther. Uh, I thought it was feeding on something like a dead animal, mostly it could be a sheep. Uh, it's obviously stood out like a sore thumb. Question is, how long do you stay around to film it so people will believe you before legging it the hell out of there? Yeah. I Doing mean, a conversation you have with your head? Yeah. Just, but I mean, this is pretty good evidence. Looks like yeah, video evidence is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to this when we do the Bigfoot evidence thing. Your video evidence? Yeah, well, there's loads. Yeah, all right. Uh, see, uh, all of a sudden, oh yeah, okay, that's, that's yeah, you know, yeah, panthers and stuff wandering around. But well, look, I mean, there's a whole bunch of reasoning as to why it makes sense. People in the seventies had to get rid of them, but it wasn't legal to get rid of them, so they did throw them out into the yeah. wild. Most people ended up finding out where some of them are actually from, like the names of the mm-hmm. owners. And yeah, there's a bunch still out there that occasionally kill sheep, and we have farmers keep reporting that yeah, my sheep got killed mm-hmm. clearly by a big cat, and then there's footage of the big cat. Yep. We've got all of that for Bigfoot, yeah, apart from being yeah, released into the wild. Yeah, sure, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go to some experts. So there's a chap called Rick Minter who uh, has seen five conclusive videos of big cats in the UK and believes there's a breeding population of around 250 
around the country. Uh, five well reported sightings since January. Um, I can't remember what year this was. This in is before 2019. They declared an endangered species. Sorry? In before they declared an endangered species. I mean, they should be exterminated, really. Um, well, what else do you have to do with them? Well, they're going to be declared an endangered species. Uh, yeah, all, all exterminated. Yeah. And the, the thing is about these cats is that they, they are the same species, basically. They're like subspecies, but they can all interbreed. You know, so like lions and tigers can interbreed. The, these clearly in, are interbreeding. Um, it's just people seem to forget how friggin' dangerous they are as well. Oh, yeah, like, it's insane. I've seen a whole bunch of clips. I, it must be like certain fantasy of Joe, sorry, an obsession of Joe Rogan's. Because he does talk about it a lot. What? Well, he'll go into detail with like some guest and just talk about how like, like there was some footage of a guy stroking these hyenas. He yeah. clearly had like grown up with them or something, and he was being nice to them. And they're in the wild now. And Joe just went into detail about how great their teeth are to rip over bones. It's they can amazing. rip off yeah, your arms in can, seconds. Hyenas can crack bone with their jaws. Yeah. So this guy, I mean, they could rip off his arms in seconds and rip into bits. Yeah. There's nothing stopping them. Yeah. And the purpose being, of course, they have to eat carcasses, so they're great at yeah. destroying bones because they're having to deal with what's left over from the lion. Mm. And he goes into detail about how bears, like, just one swing, and they will kill you. Oh, yeah. And they're just, it, if you run at certain bears, like, it will come out and it will eat your organs and whatnot. Yeah. And I'm listening to all this, and he's playing the footage. And then there's one clip I, I mentioned earlier. Like, he literally pulls out, there was a guy who had got attacked by a bear. Half his face had been ripped off by yeah. it. His eyeball was, like, hanging out. And he made a video talking to the camera after he survived. And Joe's showing this to the guest with, like, a big smile on his face. Oh, yeah. I mean, just after watching one of those, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is dangerous. Yes. Uh, John's pointing out that lion and tiger hybrids are infertile. Um, I would have to double check, but I think it depends on which way it is. The, no, no, I think it depends on which way it is. If it's like, you know, like male and female, of size, it becomes infertile. Well, were we dealing with lion and tigers anyway? I thought we were dealing with pumas. No, yeah, we're, we're dealing with uh, leopards. Yeah, pumas, jaguars, um, leopards, things like that. Um but uh, anyway, so uh, he uh, receives routinely and regularly reports, reports of primarily American mountain lions and black panthers. Uh, he was a former Min, uh, Rick Minter was a former. Word is sorry, <laughs> that word is ruined. It's black panthers. Yeah, I guess it is. He was a former advisor to the UK government on countryside management. Uh, so this isn't just some random guy. Kill all the predators. Why? Well, how difficult is that? Well, yeah, uh, he told the Daily Star, some snippets of big cats have been caught on trail cameras or camera traps. Several of these are shown at my talks. Uh, there was one farmer coming away from a meeting and he showed me uh, some footage on his mobile phone. Absolutely 10 out of 10 quality uh, video footage of a puma on his land. We came back jaw dropping, but he kept this quiet to himself. He added, most landowners don't think it's a good idea. Uh, mo most landowners, landowners think it's good if it's kept measured and low key. If they made it known where the last sighting was, you'd get vigilantes turning up with guns. Based. Okay. Yeah, uh, you may also run into other problems. I know it's a thing in the United States, maybe not with the big cats here. Mm. But if you find an endangered species, the correct thing to do if you're a landowner is to kill it and then shut up. Not to <laughs> report it. Because Why? if you report it, there's all kinds of regulations oh, that yeah, come down yeah, yeah, on what yeah. you can do with that well, land. Oh, you can't destroy its habitat. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the next one. Uh, another expert, Dr. Andrew Hemmings. Believes he has found proof big cats have been stalking Gloucestershire and neighbouring counties by analysing remains of wild animals which appear to have been eaten by beasts larger than any other known British carnivore. Uh, Hemmings is a senior lecturer in animal science at the Royal Agricultural University in Cirencester. You know, a kook, otherwise we'd call them. Uh, and this is the thing, there's this weird stigma about this subject as well. Where it's like, oh, they're, they're, don't be ridiculous. And I think it's just cope. I think it's denial. It's like, no, of course there's nothing dangerous. About yeah, but actually, look. Look at look look at the bloody picture, like that. There's Gloucestershire, definitely the beast of Trowbridge. It's not even far away. Genuinely concerned about this. Um, so he spent the last year examining twenty animal skeletons, which all bore unusual teeth marks. Some of the livestock and deer remains found by farmers, landowners, and volunteers have been found in unusual circumstances, which suggest they've been killed by a big cat. Uh, then you have one of the world's most famous trackers. A Miss Rhoda Watkins, who spent 20 years investigating big cats, uh, using her specialist knowledge in Namibia, 
has come to the UK and gathered enough evidence to be certain of the presence of these animals in the UK and claims there is a healthy breeding population. Uh, she honed her skills with the San Bushman in Nam Namibia, renowned as the best trackers in the world. I have studied the behaviour of animals, including prey species and big cats, and see things with a tracking mindset. There is just too much evidence out there that cannot be anything that it cannot be anything other than big cats. There's a lot of nonsense around sightings of domestic cats and dogs, but all the size, uh, all the signs are there that there is a decent-sized population out there. I spend all my time outdoors, and I'm tracking wildlife constantly. Uh, when you do that, you find things that don't fit in with the native wildlife. Uh, and like I said uh, earlier, but if we get the next one, um, another big cat expert is just like, look, there's definitely um, at least 250. Uh, there's more than a thousand witnesses over a decade. Um, it seems that this is just true at this point. It seems it's just, this is just a fact. Living in Britain, we now have giant, dangerous, wild cats in the country. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.